What is this? Good video by Skateballin3 where he actually went through the Daily Wire interview process to become a video editor, deleted the NDA part of their NDA so they can't sue, and then actually got the job. Wish I thought of this. Is going to apply to edit for Tucker. Crowder came out the other week, and that's a very week, and that's a very, you know, deep division there, which is sad. But, you know, Tim Cast or whatever else, we're very, you know, we're friendly with them. They'd come over here and hung out. So I think more we compare ourselves to how do we beat the New York Times? How do we beat the Washington Post? That's really what's on our gun sites. What's the deal with technology companies lately? The tech industry, once looked at as incredibly profitable and viable, has mutated into a late stage capitalism dystopian nightmare. The tech industry usually leads the way when it comes to growth. Lately though, it's been laying off people at a much higher rate than the rest of the economy. Mark Zuckerberg announcing another round of layoffs. I take full responsibility for this decision. In the past six months, we've seen mass layoffs at companies like Amazon, Twitter, Meta, Google, Microsoft, just to name a few. And while the prospects for those who were let go from their cushy jobs as video producers are looking increasingly slim, there does seem to be one media company standing unshaken by the financial woes of the streaming wars. <coughs> the Daily Wire here seems to be the public enemy in this issue, which is kind of interesting because the Daily Wire is so powerful and so well-funded. It's 100% that Ben Shapiro is a figurehead. And there's some good people at the Daily Wire. I don't want to attack them all. But I'm going to tell you folks, there's, they are worse than the Democrats. Ben Shapiro and all the guys at the Daily Wire who have been on an absolute tear of homophobia and transphobia. These yeah. men are... They've been killing it. There's something going on with them. That's right. The Daily Wire seems to have just a little more cash than they know what to do with. Shamelessly throwing it at anyone who will help spread their message of what some would call fascist hate speech and others would just call good old-fashioned conservative values. In fact, it sort of suggests that if there is a racial bias, broadly speaking on a cultural level right now, it mostly applies to what we would call white people. The only group of people that in this country that are being erased in any, in any kind of meaningful way, um, historically, are white. To eradicate transgenderism from public life, that, that would be sufficient to, to attain that goal. These people are demonic. Okay, the trans agenda is demonic. But there was one man, one hero, who said no to the Daily Wire. One true Canadian American patriot, <laughs> just a little more racist than the rest. Barack Obama, mother, I'm the president of plowing that ad. You, <laughs> I'm, not all black people look alike. Fat whores, <laughs> just gel <laughs> together in my head. Matter of fact, I would like to send out gangs. <laughs> of retarded people yeah. to lynch pedophiles. But the Daily Wire just couldn't seem to change Steven Crowder's mind, no matter how much money they offered him. Like a true proletarian and workers' rights activist, comrade Steven Crowder bravely unveiled all the details of his $50 million offer from the Daily Wire. Here's the thing, Daily Wire, Jeremy, and I really do hope that we can talk. The answer is yes, that offer did come from the Daily Wire. Uh, I'm not trying to hide that fact. I'm not ashamed of that fact. In fact, I think it's a very good offer. Daily Wire out of themselves very, very quickly. And sure enough, if you see all of the people who, who work there, um, some of whom I have relationships with. And Steve and I had always been very friendly. I know Jeremy was even friendlier. I, I'm personally insulted by Steven's behavior here when he personally recorded a phone call with my best friend, Jeremy Boring, oh. and then proceeded to release that publicly. That is disgusting. I'm not suggesting that the, that the uh, guidelines aren't terrible. I'm suggesting that if making money off of those platforms is part of how you're justifying the salary you're paying someone, then when those go away, everybody loses money. You can't pay the same amount with less revenue. How about you create a different business model? See, here's the thing, Daily Wire, they keep talking about a business. Well, I walked away from the table because I'm talking like it's about a country, about a movement. You've heard me say this many times, I wanna pass the torch. I want there to be someone else to do this. Now, I'm personally no Steven Crowder. I'm not a big fan of mugs, and I have a fully functioning heart. But if the Daily Wire is giving away job offers that big, maybe I could get, I don't know, $2 million? I feel like that's pretty reasonable.
It's the Daily Wire! Starring Ben Shapiro! These are facts, and facts don't care about your feelings. Jeremy Boring! Our country's in trouble. Conservatives are being canceled by Hollywood, the media, universities. Matt Walsh! Good to be here with my fellow right-wing extremists. It's a very dangerous group here, and I'm happy about that. Candace Owens! We are capitalists. We believe in the free market. Michael Knowles! Transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. Featuring Jordan Peterson. What the hell are we going to do without men? Andrew Clavin. For more spectacular Claveny goodness, like and subscribe. Brett Cooper. When is the good fairy going to come with her magic wand and change my penis into a vagina? Bullshit. That did not happen. And your host. Alex Novo! Thank you. Uh, yeah. This is an Austin Ock recommended, recommended video from an editor who's uh, I think it's important clearly to know exactly a fan of mine who... and others as well. Uh, the channel's called Alex Novell. Um, respect uh, for doing this, by the way. They infiltrated Daily Wire, got hired by them, and then filmed the entire process. The Daily Wire actually is. It seems like they just kind of appeared out of nowhere when Trump was president. And while that's not exactly how it happened, it's disturbingly close. See, back in 2013, annoying lawyer and Breitbart columnist Ben Shapiro teamed up with Jeremy Boring, a successful Hollywood producer and close personal friend of Zachary Shazam Levi, to found a company called Truth Revolt. Welcome back, and joining us now is Ben Shapiro, editor-in-chief of Truth Revolt, editor-at-large of Breitbart News. Conservatives in general in the United States are having a very uphill go of it. They're having a very uphill battle. Truth Revolt was a short-lived, bizarro clone of Media Matters that failed to re-secure funding through the David Horowitz Center for Freedom after only a year David Horowitz existence. is a fucking Despite hate his criminal. failure, Ben Shapiro and Jeremy Boring had secured tons of fans in the conservative sphere. But perhaps the most important one of those fans was a man by the name of Ferris Wilkes. Women do not want... I love this guy. ...weak, immature, pitiful men. That's not something that women used to say. I want to marry a weak, immature, pitiful man. Hell yeah, brother! You're so right! You're so, so goddamn right, Ferris! If you're Ferris. looking for a mate, if you're a young man, well, don't be that kind of person. An expert fracker and kingmaker for the Texas GOP, Ferris Wilkes was enamored with the confidence and Hollywood experience behind both Ben and Jeremy, eventually offering them a small, humble seed investment of $4.7 million to start a new company that would be a powerhouse for conservative news and entertainment, The Daily Wire. So in 2015, with almost $5 million in hand, the Daily Wire would literally pop up out of nowhere. Hi, black people. If you're like seven in 10 Americans, you probably haven't heard anything at all about Planned Parenthood killing unborn babies and then selling their body parts to the highest bidder. While most people online- <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, they're so fucking unhinged. By the way, remember, all the money is on the leftist grift. That's why so many billionaires have come to me when I first started and said things like, Hassan, please, we want to give you $4.7 million to start your own, uh, you know, leftist media franchise that will then use every waking moment to shit on people like ourselves, the billionaires in question, that are giving you a small loan of $4.7 million. That's always how this works. When I had, you know, uh, 35 fucking live viewers, that's what was going on. Um, okay, hold on. I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna give it to you. Hold on one second. Here. Seem to automatically associate Ben Shapiro as the leader of the Daily Wire. The company's internal culture seems to actually favor Jeremy, the boring man himself. Employees at the Daily Wire don't even refer to Jeremy by name, actually. Instead, they call him the God King. Do you remember when there were two genders and only one and a half of them had to shave their mustaches? 
Oh, hi. I'm Jeremy Boring, CEO and God King of The Daily Wire. Why is it that guys like Jeremy Boring or Elon Musk want so desperately to be liked and praised by either like their employees or people online? So now that I've done my research and feel excited about my future employment, I can finally apply. The questions on the job application to the Daily Wire are super normal. Sheep need not apply? That's fucking sick. Questions like, the Daily Wire is one of America's fastest growing conservative media companies and counterculture outlets for news, opinion, and entertainment. Would you be comfortable working in a work environment that produces content that is political and conservative in nature? Would you? Or what about with regard to COVID? How comfortable are you working in an office during this time? These questions- Everyone's a liberal, never forget. Questions fall into a category that I'm gonna call yes or no questions. And sure there's nothing- This is you? Oh, this is skate ball in three. <laughs> You're so typical, typical, typical fucking spammer. Typical, and then comes in today and says, Hassan Abihead takes on Steven Crowder like it's not him. Like it's not him. Like it's someone else's video. No, we're watching it. It's very good. As you can see, the pinned tweet is also uh, urging people to go in and... Hassan, you got to watch this guy, man. This guy's got some good ideas, dude. I know. I saw. We're watching. It's very good so far. Nothing wrong with wanting to hire like-minded individuals for your company necessarily, but you do end up building an office filled with sycophantic megalomaniacs who hate gay and trans folks. But I guess that's kind of what they're going for over at the Daily Wire. White people generally are the least racist people on earth. I mean that in a very <laughs> way. All of us today would be in a worse spot if uh, slavery never existed at all across the entire globe. The next step to getting hired at The Daily Wire is what they call a one-way video interview. Hi there, my name is and I'm one of the recruiters here at The Daily Wire. I want to personally thank you for your interest in working with us. Since 2015, we've been on a mission to impact and influence American culture. Conservative in nature, we are in search of hungry, humble, and smart individuals. Our teams are non-traditional in the sense that they actively try to break things, literally every day. We think differently, are entrepreneurial in our approach, and never- Everyone's a liberal. Neoliberal monoculture, baby. Everyone's a liberal. Everyone's a liberal. It's always the same. Never settle for the status quo because we are excited about the challenge and are all here for something bigger than ourselves. Your interview will begin shortly. I guess this is their chance to see how familiar I am with the Daily Wire brand, but also to make sure that I'll aesthetically fit in with the diverse community at the Daily Wire. So now it's time for the big interview. My chance to make my future bosses at the Daily Wire see that I could be a valuable and agreeable worker. But I had to fit the part. Me? Look at me. I could never pass for an alpha male conservative. Or could I? Stop treating me like an assemblage of body parts. I'm a human with a soul. I'm a human with feelings. So you stop, stop that right now, internet. Shaking with confidence and alpha male stop. strength, I joined the video call. Stop! Ready to move with the no! Oh no, you fucking, oh no, you the Ben Shapiro eyebrow filler. They had, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. They have to hire you at that point. Look at Brett Cooper. The more you look like Ben Shapiro, the more your eyebrows resemble Ben Shapiro's eyebrows, the more they will want to hire you. That is actually fucked up. Daily Wire's director of post-production. Holy fuck, I just realized this is frugal aesthetic editing, but for political commentary. We're excited you had time to do an interview with us today. Right now, we have a few different jobs open. Some of them definitely have to do with YouTube content and growing that YouTube content. And then also now as we make mini docs or other smaller shows like Jordan Peterson's Dragon, Sponsors of Men, or things of that nature. There's a few different projects I'd be interested in you working on. So you know the role that I can envision for someone like yourself. Be like, how do you work? Bro, yeah, you brow max, brother. That's fucked up across variety 
where it'd be like, okay, well, Candace has a new episode of something with a famous celebrity coming out tomorrow. Well, let's see. Let's see if Alex can do the trailer for that. And he can pop out a trailer in two days that's really badass. Then also now you go back to editing a documentary on whatever it is. Or maybe it's a YouTube video that's silly for Michael Knowles. For me, my goal with the team is like, how do we become as good or be as good consistently as the New York Times or Vox or Vice or whoever it is? And be for me, I'm always pushing us to be more edgy and more interesting. I don't want to be the conservative media that our parents had. It's like, how can we be edgy as possible? And then when the people above us tell us we need to back off a little bit, then we'll do that. But try to be as edgy as we can. You know, politics aside, you guys are a company that has one of the widest reaches on the internet. If you go on YouTube, you will be, I have a very difficult time finding something that's not touched by the Daily Wire. No, I appreciate it. I think, no, I agree with all that for me and know that one of the things that we emphasize here is that people don't have to be ideologically aligned to work here. There's a guy, he just left working here to take a cool opportunity, but he worked here for three, four years and he had the Andrew Yang stickers and all kinds of different, you know, all kinds of different views and there's nothing wrong with that. We're all welcome to that. It's more just we want to ask because we want people to feel comfortable because I can't tell you, we've gone through a number of interviews where you get all the way to the end, like, hey, here's a job offer. You want to come in? They're like, I don't know if I feel comfortable with the content. We're like, but we talked about this. So, you know what I mean? It's more just seeing like Aww. that aspect more than anything else. Aw, these guys, man. These poor puppies, dude. They fucking have... They, they, they build this beautiful relationship with these editors only to find out at the end of the day that they are, their politics are just not... You know, are, their politics don't match up. Aw, they've been hurt before, dude. else is the reason I ask. Yeah, totally. Pivoting from there a little bit, what kind of people annoy you the most? How do you handle them? Hmm, um... What kind of people annoy me the most? Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, probably the liberals. Okay, cool. As far as being successful within the <laughs> team, I think one of the things we're really big into, I don't think, I know we're really big into, is we're really into the no assholes theory. We're really down to like, hey, we all get along. I think the company as a whole has that pretty much, you know, not official policy, but like, there's a lot of lovely people that work here. We work really hard. It's a really startup environment, but everybody gets along. It's like the nicest people in the world to work with. This that is actually is, really know, interesting to see. Holy fuck. And and it's that. like really fucking, you know, taking a look at the engine. You know what I mean? You just open up the hood. You take a look at the engine behind the scenes. And like the reason why he's saying like the no assholes policy is because like they, they do they, they have to have that because like there's a lot of, there's a variety of different perspectives in the republican right as well obviously in the reactionary movement but they have to maintain some level of stability and and it just stop the infighting and because it's like varying degrees of vice signaling that conservative movements uh are all about they have to be like yeah there's no assholes like you know it's just like if someone specifically targets your identity in some way like don't get mad about that <laughs> i'm really excited for just the coo was talking the other day just like the next four five six months for us they just have all these huge ideas about things they want to do and just like the company's going to feel so explosive for the next like six months and like as i hear some of that it's like you know hey you can feel two different ways i would say me in my first year working here i'd be a little scared like oh the six months because i know the level of work that they're going to give us in the next six months is going to be intense the part of me that's now it's like you accept it's going to be intense it's also going to be awesome that part i love deeply and so it's like how do we find work-life balance while also doing all this cool shit yeah, totally. I, I look for, like, even now, if they talk about the next six months, I'm jacked about it. It's like, okay, let's see what we got. It's going to be fun. That's my goal. Nice. All right. I appreciate that. Thanks so much. Yeah, of course. Love it. Thank you so much, Alex. It's been lovely to chat with you, my man. Yeah, it's been really great. Thanks for taking the time. Of course, man. All right. Well, you have a great day, dude. After the interview. They're not talking way too fast. I sped it up a little bit. I was starting to feel like maybe this whole video was a bad idea. I mean, he seemed like a genuinely nice guy, except for that weird part where he quoted the Bible to me. You know, was that line that St. Paul says? St. Paul says the gospel is preached, and so I'm happy. But other than that, he seems like a hardworking guy who cares about what he does. I continued feeling like that for about, I don't know, five more minutes. And then I looked him up on Twitter, and I saw how much he hates gay people. And weirdly, that made me feel a lot better about the whole situation. But seriously, <laughs> let's talk ethics for a minute. Recording conversations without informing all parties is not something society would call ethical. I think lots of conservatives watching this might say something like, why are you doing this? Or that's illegal. In fact, some government fat cat regulators would even say that it's wiretapping, wiretapping or some other silly term. For all these reasons and more, I made sure to properly inform my prospective new bosses that I was recording our conversation. I was uh, I was doing some screen recording. What is that? I was uh, I was doing some screen recording. What is that? What is that? Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. The fuck?
<laughs> There's no way. Bro, I don't think that's legally permissible, dog. Luckily, you fucking hid their faces and stuff, but goddamn, like. <laughs> Okay, so a few hours after my interview, I got an email from the Daily Wire's internal recruiter with some documents they wanted me to sign. One of these documents was an NDA. Ugh, the dreaded NDA. Non-disclosure agreements are infamous in the entertainment industry, not only for suppressing the free speech of workers in the business, but also holding them financially responsible for any supposed damages perceived by the company. And that's exactly the type of agreement that the Daily Wire served me with. There's a lot of language about keeping confidential information private, your run-of-the-mill NDA stuff, basically. But then, there was this cheeky little line right here. Consultant acknowledges that the unauthorized use or disclosure of company's confidential information would cause company to incur irreparable harm and significant damages, the degree of which may be difficult to ascertain. Accordingly, consultant agrees that company will have the right to obtain immediate equitable relief to enjoin any unauthorized use or disclosure of its confidential information. So what do I do? I mean, I obviously can't sign this agreement. Or can I? You know, contracts are funny things. What do you do? <laughs> I mean, I know about contracts being funny. Like at the top of the hour when there's a three-minute ad break. That's a funny thing. It's only funny to those who are, of course, subscribed because they don't even see it. They're like, ha-ha, what do you mean the ad break? That's right. If you want to be one of those people that doesn't see the ads at the top of the hour, all you need to do is subscribe. You too can be one of those people that thinks it's funny. It's at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break, and you don't get to see it. You know, haha. -ha. What do you mean by ads? You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Here's a three-minute ad break now. Ha <laughs> ha. If you don't like something in a contract that you're supposed to sign, that's easy. Just delete it. So I deleted all the language mentioning disclosure in the non-disclosure agreement. The way I see it, from a legal standpoint at least, if they were to, I don't know sign this contract and then send it back to me without noticing any of the changes I made, that would be really beneficial to my whole right to make this video situation. So you have no idea how excited I was when they did exactly that. Signed it right there. The bottom of the contract that they didn't even read. That's crazy. Oh my God. Okay, that actually does kind of... I don't know. I, I feel like that kind of does protect them a little bit, I'm pretty sure. But also on top of that, you have, legally you have to disclose red line items when making changes to contracts. Still feels kind of illegal. But it is wild that It is kind of wild that like their lawyers wouldn't look at it. You're not a lawyer, you're not a lawyer presumable, so you don't really need to have to call out your edits. It's their fault they didn't compare the NDA with their template. It is construed against the Daily Wire as the one that drafted the document. I guess you also would never really fucking have a lawyer read that. What is a red line item? So redlining is when uh, you uh, pay an incredibly expensive Hollywood lawyer to overlook your contract so they can make minor changes, but that minutia actually ends up with, like, usually a fuckload of revenue that they were trying to take from you. Or that sounded very personal. Uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's basically the same for every other industry. Wild that they sent him that, not through DocuSign, by the way. How would they not send it? In this day and age, Daily Wire not using DocuSign? Are you fucking crazy? It's like free, isn't it? Which is where you can't do something like that. Like DocuSign or other free, uh, uh, you know, things like that. 
Maybe it's not for the business. Maybe it's not free for the business. But regardless, like, that's crazy to me that they wouldn't use that for literally this purpose. This is why you fucking... I've never not signed a DocuSign contract at this point. Today is the day of the big edit test. I woke up to an email with all the juicy details. The challenge. Edit two videos featuring the man, the myth, the legend, Ben Shapiro. First, a classic episode of Ben Shapiro Debunked, where Ben smashes liberal ideologies with facts and logic. Fuck so which yeah. topic will Ben be debunking this week? Critical race theory is an outgrowth from the 1960s oh, article made by racial radicals that America's oh institutions God. were irrevocably oh, shot Jesus. through with racism, unfixable, and oh, worthy of no. destruction. So my first challenge is just a simple debunking critical race theory. How long do they want that in? Three to four hours? Okay. This is definitely worse than I expected. Ideals laid forth in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were not only not rooted in racism, they were wringing rejections of it. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Great, so now that we've debunked critical race theory, now it's time to move on to the second edit. This one's actually an easy one. Ben Shapiro reacts to woke TikToks. Okay, I think I've got something, but I don't know if they're gonna like it. Huh? Huh? <laughs> well, either way, I don't have much time left, so this is gonna have to do. There is no way you did Why? that. Okay, so here a few a few things. After the nearly nine-hour edit test, it was clear how like an uninformed person who watches Daily Wire content all day could be easily swayed by someone like Ben Shapiro. The brain rot of watching so much Daily Wire content that at a certain point, even if you aren't. Why do you ghost Aiden's DMs? Just curious. Kind of sounds like you're a fake friend. How do I debunk you, mum, in the bedroom with the breakfast in bed? Good old brekkie on toast. Ew. British spotted. Opinion discarded, dude. What the fuck? Also, Aiden Ross has my fucking phone number. He doesn't have to DM me. I've never... I don't think, even think you can DM people like that. Because if you DM me on Twitter, I didn't see it. ...aren't aligned with their politics. You've talked about it so much and know all the personalities there, and that's exactly what they want. They want to be as common as the New York Times or Netflix or HBO. I want to be like, how can we be bigger than the New York Times? I think the company is very much of that mindset. Our site set on HBO and Netflix. It's amazing the amount of hoops that The Daily Wire makes you jump through in order to get a job there. Doing job interviews and edit tests and just emailing back and forth with these people. Holy shit. All for a job that I don't even want. About a week later, I hear back from the recruiter about setting up the final interview. They told me during the first interview that if I made it this far, I'm basically guaranteed an offer. But will it be the two million that I set out for? We'll have to wait and see. So that's the game for today. Um, so Alex, um, we're all pretty up to speed, you know, with your uh, work samples, the test, uh, is viewed that. Um, everyone has been able to review your spark hire screen. So we definitely got some great background here, but um, just to kick things off, you know, even with previously some companies that are definitely more left leaning. And I know, and sorry, I haven't gone back to you on this, but I know there was even, we were trying to work around like, how could we potentially get in touch with references, but also you don't want to burn bridges. You know, I, under, I understand um, that kind of conundrum there. So, um, yeah, I guess kind of two-part question. How would you feel making the transition from those kinds of organizations to obviously Daily Wire, openly, politically, right-leaning? Um, and if you were to come on board with us, would you have concerns about post-Daily Wire losing opportunities because of having Daily Wire on your resume? You guys are a lot more accepting of people who have different ideas. And I think a lot of these left-leaning organizations, they are not as accepting of people who have open ideas, which is why, you know, I'm sitting here Crushed in the first place. It. When I go to work for a company, I want to sit down and do my job. Regardless of what the company's mission is, I want to be able to be, number one, before anything, a worker. We certainly don't want anyone coming on board who, if they had to, you know, animate or edit a certain video, they would be like, they wouldn't feel comfortable doing it because it's so, you know, in conflict with what they believe, you know? For me, looking through your edit tests and things like that, and even looking through your YouTube channel, it's clear what I like most about you as far as you have a lot of interesting ideas. The ideas I really love and some of the technical things as far as they want to work on tightening up some of those. You know, I can go into more detail about that, but make sure the job... Hassan, you're gay, I swear to God. You fucking wish, bitch. I did fuck your dad, though. So, your dad's gay. Bam.
an idea, something that you're comfortable with. Totally. But yeah, just want to at least bring that up as that was one of my thoughts going into this based on the type of work I'm interested in you doing if we bring you on board. And you know, this is the last round here. We're at Wednesday, so you should have an update from me um, by the end of this week. All right, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks so much, Alex. See, Thanks, you. Alex. See ya. Talk to you soon. Bye. So despite telling me that they hated my YouTube videos and thought they were badly edited. Even in watching through a bunch of YouTube videos, some of them they feel a little baggy and they need tightening up or, you know, parts here are a little cleaned up or here or there. I like the one what about the guy with the burning and things like that, the weed salesman, has a very Tim and Eric vibe. It has that kind of a vibe, I'm sure, on purpose as opposed to a tighter, very strong thing. I still managed to get the job offer only an hour after the final interview. Hey Alex, this is calling from The Daily Wire. Uh, I just want to say thanks so much again for taking the time to do a final interview with us this afternoon um, or earlier today and um, actually calling to let you know we wanted to offer you the video editor position. So, did they offer me the $2 million? $1 million? $100,000? No? Lower. Much lower. The Daily Wire offered me $62,000 with an extra $23,000 that I could earn working overtime. Um, and I'll kind of give you a little bit of a breakdown of the pay. Loki, not bad. I mean, is that, is that bad? I, I actually don't know what the editing marketplace looks like now. Like my expectation clearly is not what I would pay. Uh, so for like a normal company, especially a right wing company, As an animator, we deserve way more. No, but he's not an animator. He's a, just a simple editor, no? I I do think that 63,000 plus or 60,000 plus 23 for overtime seems better than I would have expected from the Daily Wire. But remember, I last time I worked at like a media company, like a media startup was like five years ago. You know what I mean? So I'm basically asking uh, you guys if that's like a good... 60K is not good pay at all. That's poverty wages for a lot of people. No, 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 no. You're missing, you're missing the point. No, no, no. I'm not saying $60,000 is, is good income. For the record... Um, I literally didn't, I, I did not make that kind of money and I don't know what his like, uh, resume implies, like what, how many years of experience he has. But if it's like a fully remote job, if it's a fully remote job for like a relatively lower level, like entry level, uh, editor, I would say 60,000 is pretty fucking decent if i'm not mistaken if it's in nashville i think i mean if it's not entry then it's not decent i just don't know what the average editor salary is for a, a media startup and what the what the uh qualifications are Like what the other jobs are, uh, I mean, he obviously has like experience. I mean, he's a great editor, as you can see from this video. Wait, isn't he in the fucking chat? Why don't we just ask him? Yeah, motion graphics editor, not remote, in office. So you'd have to relocate to Nashville. I don't know if they cover relocation fee. What do you think? Oh, well, you're going to say it in the video probably in a second. I can't believe you're watching my video. It's not stop. You guys, I'm shaking. Stop. People are just cosplaying their jobs. The NDA was specifically for the edit test. Okay, let's let's hear everything else. A structure. This is a non-exempt position. Also, it's a very good video, by the way. Congratulations. Meaning it's hourly and you'd be eligible for overtime. What? This doesn't make any sense. How come Steven Crowder gets offered $50 million? He's constantly getting banned from YouTube and his heart literally doesn't work. He could drop dead at any minute. There's gotta be some way that I can convince them I'm worth more than 60K. 
maybe the fact that I don't have a heart condition could somehow increase my value to the Daily Wire. But how do I prove that? Alex? Yeah, hi, how are you? Hey, good, how's it going? Great. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Sorry, I forgot the message. No worries. So I went to the doctor, hoping to get a recommendation letter for my heart that I could use to bargain for the extra $1.92 million. Okay. Okay, scare me at first. Okay, so now that I have a letter from my doctor affirming my peak physical condition, I think I can finally come back with a counteroffer to the Daily Wire. Hi, thanks so much for the offer, that's so exciting. Unfortunately, the number is not exactly what I'm looking for in terms of base salary, but fear not, I think there's still a way we can make this work. Bearing in mind the fact that you guys offered Steven Crowder a $50 million contract, despite him being a super racist and not having a fully working heart, I'm hoping that I could at least get a cool $2 million, because while I'm not a super racist and don't have as many YouTube subscribers as Crowder, I do have a fully working heart. I would be glad to attach a reference letter from my doctor, confirming the pristine condition of my heart. It seems like our numbers aren't too far off from each other, so I've attached my professional references along with this email. All the best! Sadly, a few hours after sending my counter offer, the Daily Wire replied with a thank you for your time. Oh no. It's the business equivalent of when Disney says have a magical day. Basically, a go fuck yourself. The next day, the Daily <laughs> Wire reposted the job on their careers page, a clear sign to me that they had to restart the hiring process all the way back from the beginning. Oh no. So that was it. The jig was I up. I can't believe his counter about the heart thing didn't work. That's so strange. <laughs> I feel like that's. You have all the qualifications you need right there. What else do they need? And it was time for me to move on. But what if I'm not quite finished trolling conservative media companies just yet? There is a deliberate and venomous anti-white campaign in our country and it drives me crazy and we shouldn't put up with it. It is evil from the pit of hell. Hello, Alex. Yeah, hi, it looks like it's just connecting. Oh, hi, how are you? Good, how are you doing today? Doing great, doing great. I can't uh, believe all these guys are named slurs, by the way. Like you had to censor it. And they were all doing blackface, so you had to censor that too. Kind of crazy how racist they are. <laughs> I mean, I expected it. I just didn't know that they would be like that aggro about it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, cool. So uh, you applied for the uh, video editor position with Turning Point, correct? Yeah. Like, you know, we got a lot of a large variety of content. Like, we have a lot of story driven content, but we also have a lot of. Um, Donor what what story driven content do they have? Ooh, donor driven requests. Oh, interesting. Driven requests, you know, things that are can be simpler, or not as exciting. Yeah. Whether it's something that you know a donor requests, like they have an idea and they're like, hey, you know, it'd be cool if Turning Point would make this. And um, and if it's something that you know agrees with our mission statement and something that we're excited about doing, we'll, we'll generally take it. I mean, we're competing with media in general, and like just the way that media has kind of been taken over by the left, like there really isn't any sort of like. Well, I don't think this guy fucking believes it, dude. Like, it almost feels like he has to do this. Because, like, he has to say these lines because they are trying to do self-selection. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah, the left is taking over the media. It doesn't seem like he's saying it with his fucking chest. Maybe I'm wrong. No, and I, I guess, or, like, any sort of, like like obviously leaning left or like obviously left um voices that we're really competing with it's mostly just kind of like this is the grand scheme of media and so really what we're trying to do is trying to provide an alternative that you know is, is pro america pro freedom everything that turning point stands for and what conservatism stands for like trying to create a space within media that can you know like take back that audience and, and inject just like good values in the in the media again. and that can that, yeah, I mean, that could do a lot of good. I haven't seen it do a lot of good, too. So, if uh, we move forward, it'll be a second interview. I'm nice to meet you, Alex. This is going to be copying in our last meeting. Dude, another, another racial slur as a name. That's fucked up. A little bit late. No worries, no worries. So, when you guys, when you guys make, like, a video that gets requested by a donor, does that get delivered... Does that get delivered to the donor? Or is that put out to the TPUSA channels? Like, how exactly does the distro happen there? 
Yeah, it just depends. Sometimes it's just for them, and sometimes it's uh, just a, like a, uh, a doc we did. So, like, I got to work on uh, two documentaries last year that were donor finance, uh, which was one was Border Battle, and then the other documentary was uh, The Great Global Reset with Jack Sovic. So, uh, those are donor uh, specific projects that would be distributed. I see. So, it's interesting because it sounds like you guys kind of balance this. Uh, you're, you're a content house because you're producing content for your own channels, obviously. But then there's also this other side of things where you're producing content that doesn't always go out to, like, TPUSA. Sometimes there's stuff that just goes, like, internal distribution almost. So what what would you say, like, the uh, ratio is of, like, of turning point content to, like, external distribution? Uh, yeah, we're, we're working on that now. Uh, I would say that we're going to be doing more 70-30. 70, 30. Like 70% of our own and then 30 of theirs. But just like the Daily Wire, Turning Point USA turned me down. At the beginning of this whole process, I was hoping to just troll the Daily Wire a bunch and maybe mess up their hiring process a little bit so they'd have to spend more time trying to find someone and less time making hateful content. But to do so, I had to change who I was and even stoop as low as producing some of the content that I ride so hard against. So was it worth it? Yeah, I think so. In the end, I don't think any worker should be forced to work for a nightmare company like the Daily Wire. But that's not the reality for most people. Instead, you have greedy losers like Steven Crowder getting paid $50 million to do online racism, while everyone else is left squabbling for fewer and fewer jobs with less and less salary. I realized after getting these offers this was the fucking Wire, awesome. that I'd never actually turned down a job before. So maybe after watching this video, if you interview for a job at a company you actually like, <coughs> you'll know that you're worthy and valuable. Or at least know that in a job interview, they want to hire you as much as you want to be hired. I hope you do. That was awesome. Good shit. Okay, Alex. Okay, Alex. Week, and that's a very, you know. Great video. Um, good job. Hopefully you don't get sued. Uh, I liked it a lot. Hassan, can you endorse me on LinkedIn as a great editor? Absolutely fucking lutely not, because that would require me to get on LinkedIn, and I would rather kiss myself than do such a foolish thing. I have literal PTSD from my time as uh, doing uh, as a as a biz dev sales guy at the Young Turks, from all the time I had to spend on fucking LinkedIn. Uh, uh, it is absolutely the worst. Um, I hope I don't get sued, love you, chat. No, you did great. Uh, I already watched, uh, your rage react to my basketball in the beginning. Uh, in the beginning of this broadcast. And you are right. He was scared. 